everybody, Masha is here and um, I need to share something with you because I think you may like the idea. So what happened yesterday, I looked around my studio and my art room and my storage and found a bunch of uh, felted flowers which I never either finished or I don't know it. Some of them were some experiments, some of them I used I was planning to use for some project, I don't know, maybe hat or scarf, but I mean, they never really were used. And I decided to bring them all together and make um, a spring wrap uh, for, for my doll. And I actually posted in one of our felting groups and people started giving me lots of compliments about this thing. And I thought, you know what, um, why not? I look good in this uh, circle, right? Um, why not? Uh, you have something um, you never used and uh, somehow it's not working and you just put it all together and it's repurposing and it's not a waste, of course, and uh, uh, it's okay that they are different. It's okay that they don't match and I think that it's all actually good. And they do have a theme. First I thought, oh, they should be some theme that should be all white or it should be some kind of a, I don't know, more like from design perspective. But then I thought, you know what? Ah, who cares? I mean, they have a theme. They all make from wool. They're all mine. <laughs> They're all made by hands. I found that uh, yarn I put together like that. I don't know. Maybe I should just do the whole thing next time. I found like the strip, I don't know, it's in a craft store, has little buds, I don't know, like gives you like some springy look. It looks like that on the back. Some of them, honestly, I have to finish like attaching more nicely. They're just here right now sitting on the pins. But um, I think it's a nice project and it's, uh, if you have anything left over or if you have something like wrap, make a little flower or some and do like a wrap for your door give it to somebody and um, today I actually wanted you to show one little trick which I don't mind to share uh, how to make uh, I don't know the daffodil do you see how I have a little uh, this thing in the middle uh, I don't know the name of it you know I don't know the name of that part of that flower I should look up uh, look it up um, this stick, I know it's in Russian, as you understand, and probably most of you know I am Russian, I'm from Moscow. I know Russian word from that thing, but I don't know the English version. And I think it's, um, it's, uh, kind of pretty, it stays pretty well, you know, and you can actually make a whole bunch of them. So I... Do know once I took this class how to make flowers from um, prefelt murina, and I came up with my own version of that uh, thing. I uh, was making them and was taking a few pictures, uh, and so by the end of this video, I'll put like a pictures, like will be like a small presentation or whatever you want to see. But before you see all the process in the pictures, I wanted, I still want to show you a couple things which you may like to see um, before you see the pictures. And if you have any questions, just send the, put it in the comments and I will uh, answer. And I also think that the whole idea, the whole technique may uh, help you to come up with like more more things you want to do. I don't know what it can be, but it's really, it's really not so hard. Plus, felt is a very forgiving material. It felts well. You don't have to deal with uh, putting wool like angles and stuff. And it's really fast. It's also dyeable, and um, uh, it's um, it, it, it's a lot of things you can do with it. I usually use pref I don't use felt a lot. I should probably. Uh, I should probably do my own profile because a commercial one is a little bit too heavy if you're talking about garments. Uh, but, and it's 
kind of pricey. So, but for the small bags or uh, uh, brushes, I think it's a great uh, material. I buy mine in DHG company. It's I'm, it's in Italy. Or I just find one here in the United States. They sell it on Etsy, or I think uh, some of fiber shops may have one. And sometimes it's hundred percent merino wool, and sometimes it's merino and silk. No, actually both is fine. It doesn't matter. With silk, I think it's a little bit more expensive, and uh, the fabric turns thinner. Which is a good thing and a bad thing, depends what you want to do. But for the flowers, I would just use the regular one. Uh, so, I'm going to show you how I put uh, that uh, daffodil together uh, without felting part. Because felting, I hope that most of you know how to felt. If you don't, I have other videos which shows like all this rubbing and rolling and throwing and just to shrinking all that part you uh, are more than welcome to watch in my other videos so here you go so what do i have here i have a circle which is made from um murina profelt uh diameter i can tell you right away wait a second It is, uh, it all depends how big uh, your flower would be. Mine is seven. Seven. And I have a big circle. And mine is um, about ten. Okay. So all I have to do right now is just what put one in the middle of another and uh, take a little ball okay this ball which is uh i don't know which is about two inches diameter i got from my son's uh, hockey kit he's practicing it's a little bit uh, rubber I don't know what the material is made, but this is about the size which I like. It doesn't matter. You can get a ping pong ball or you can be, get a tiny little tennis ball. Tennis probably is a little bit too big, but they have little balls and craft stores. About this, that size will work for you. So I'll take it in the middle. So in, it says like two inches. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to soar. Uh, put like a few stitches kind of around this ball size so I would take a middle somewhere in like inch and inch and inch I can draw but I just will do it really quick right now in front of so you can see so I'm using any need, uh, thread you want but it's I would prefer to be a little more um, durable uh, heavier duty so button cotton anything polyester it doesn't matter except probably silk threads because silk threads they fell together because silk is natural material we use it for nano felting we love it uh, and also just be careful with cheap uh, threads and be sure they don't bleed because we're going to use soap and water and of course we don't want uh, that thread to bleed here so threads will go we'll, we will take away later so this is all I do I just connect this thing uh, two things with thread and I'll just cut a little bit longer piece because I'm not going to do anything else with it okay this is the one part Part number one. Part number two. This is interesting. So I'll show you. <laughs> I take the ball and also I take that plastic wrap. That one is from Casca. If you're not living in the United States, I know that you still 
can find that plastic at any grocery store. Uh, what I'm doing here, I'm covering the bowl with a plastic like that. And I'm leaving here a little bit, a little bit, this little tail. I need it. I'll show you why. It's a resist. Believe it or not, with plastic, actually, you can make lots of little forms. If you're looking for some custom form, this... Um, this food plastic wrap, I mean, you just pull them out and you actually can form many little forms. Right now, I'm looking for that, uh, that thing, okay? So what I'm doing next, I'm putting it in the middle and I'm taking the yellow part, okay? First of all, uh, prefelt can be stretched a little, so you can see, so before it's even felt, before we start working on it, we still can form it just a little bit. See how I'm trying to keep the bottom flat and I can, if I pull it, don't pull hard because you don't want to break it. You don't want to make it too thin. Everything is gentle, you know, before everything like felts and or like a, a more heavy duty. See, now you already have a, some kind of a form, right? Taking them off, taking back our needle. And what we're doing here, we are doing actually here uh, probably half an inch step or even less. I don't know if. Uh, and we want to go through the edge. We want to pass a little, a uh, uh, little bit from the top, and just put all the stitches all around. So the smaller the steps, the better actually will be, because it will give us funky wrinkles. Um, I don't know if you know this Japanese technique, how they do the stitching, the decorative stitching, but um, this is some kind of the same idea, how it's, it's pretty easy, you just go through like the whole thing, I don't know, once I watched how they use their um, fingers in a certain way and you go through a round whole circle takes a few moments be patient no rush try to make them even but actually it doesn't matter as you know in um, in the real nature, nothing is perfect, right? Nothing is perfect. So when we try to copy nature, we don't have to be perfect. It's okay to make it a little bit uneven, a little bit asymmetrical. It's totally, totally fine. Okay, here I'm done. I'm taking my needle off, pulling it away, and pulling the other part of the thread right here. I hope you can see it. Everything can see. I already have it a little, a little thing. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my bowl inside, and you know what it is. It's a resist, right? So anything inside where the ball and the piece of plastic are sticking out, nothing will felt. So and then, only thing I'm trying to do here is to 
make it a little bit fix it up make it little because sometimes they are folding somewhere inside just be careful and when I'm done and when I'm done I'm just going to tie the knot right here like that and after that it's ready to felt okay if you want the wrinkles to be more visible not just have it just not on the top but also like a little bit lower maybe you take a needle and make another round like lower that. so and that's it if you're really looking to add some leaves on the bottom you can take green prefer and sort another layer just be careful so these two don't get together. You always have to control it, pull it away, or put some resist between of them. So a piece of plastic here, and then put the green one. And after that, you will be felting. So you will be throwing in the water, rubbing it, throwing it. When it first, be careful. Keep controlling it. Be sure that it doesn't um, rub the bottom. So you want this thing to stick together. You can make them separately, of course, and just not sew. But uh, sometimes it's just easier to do it all at once. And when it's already pretty much felt and already pretty much finished, then you cut your leaves and form your flower and form this thing. Keep it here as long as possible. The only thing when you decide to, when you're ready to take the ball out, make a little cut in the bottom not right here because you don't want to disturb that structure you want to keep that structure to the end even when just let it even dry and then you can pull that string out of here and from that uh, just pull it out just be careful don't cut too much because once I cut and I just cut like through thing I mean it's okay you can sew it back together not a big deal but um so I'll show you this one. Let me take it off. It's not even, it's not even sewing here yet. So eventually, this is how it will look when it's felt. Is it cool? I have a little uh, ball inside there. Like, a, is it cool? It just will shape, make it really cool shape. And just think about it that if you want to dye, you can dye the edges different color. Or you wanna, or you can put, I don't know, maybe like colorful profile, dye profile first, or like make your handmade profile. I figured it out that uh, I don't know to get, I don't want to get too into that, but my handmade profile it's usually one, two, two like pretty heavy layers of uh, wool. To make the same thickness as industrial one so this is what you can get from that this was decorated with uh, this was decorated with uh, something but uh, with thread or with wool locks but uh, is it pretty cute anyway so have fun enjoy after that stay around i will uh put a little presentation it could it will be just the pictures of the whole process one more time for you for your reference and um come back uh subscribe put your comments share uh, i'm here uh, to show some tricks and tips because i love what i do and also I will be announcing, I'm trying to record, uh, record uh, a few classes and uh, I'll be putting some announcements here about classes or webinars. 
and uh, so stay tuned uh, happy Easter everybody and enjoy sun enjoy crafting and stay healthy and um, see you next time bye bye